Hello there, welcome to The Ref Show. It's fair to say that we've acknowledged an improvement in standards of officiating in the Premier League this season. But on Saturday, it was back to the bad old ways, the bad old days of last season with major errors, I think conservatively, into double figures. So we're going to look at learning points from those and possible reasons why. With our panel this week, delighted to welcome back David Hurst, the former Sheffield Wednesday and England striker, and Keith Hackett, the former general manager of professional game Match Officials Limited. Keith, we'll be looking in a little detail at some of those incidents yes, from sure. Saturday in particular and some learning points. But can I ask you, considering the number of errors, had you still been in charge, how would you have reacted? With great disappointment. I think I'd have been on the phone to one or two managers uh, apologising. I would have then had one-to-ones with the referees. Um, I think that uh, what we're now reaping is, you know, the season to date has been a good one, I think, for the PGMOL. Uh, but we're now at the business end of the season. We're now into where every point counts and everybody's looking at every decision very closely. And uh, therefore, I think that systematic, the performance analysis system that was put in place of the one that I was running, uh, that is, no assessors at grounds, in my opinion, now is reaping the rewards for that. It's too remote. It's not one-to-one. -one. I don't think the meetings themselves, from what I hear, is actually achieving anything. I think you've got to have referees sat down, looking at these decisions and learning off each other as to how they can avoid them in the future. Well, certainly plenty to, to, to avoid yeah, sure. on Saturday. Uh, there's a detailed blog from Keith on the URTheRef.com website. Do look at that. He really does go into some detail, break it down, and he doesn't pull any punches either, I can assure you of that. Just one quick point before we move on to the detail. Phil Dowd and Lee Probert, two experienced referees that were just not seeing, uh, should they be given an alternative role coaching possibly? Well, I think both of them are good communicators. They may not like Phil Dowd's style, but ultimately both of them were good and competent referees and they've got much to offer. And I, and I think at the moment uh, the referees themselves uh, are not getting the support and the management and guidance that, that they require. I know that's quite a, quite a statement, but it seems that they're lacking. Hmm. OK, we're going to bring Hursty in on one of the major incidents, which was an elbow from Conor Wickham shortly. But how important is it that the first match of the weekend, first performance, sets the tone? I mean, it was a cracker, wasn't it? Norwich 4, Liverpool 5 was a fantastic game. On the other side of the coin, it was a game in which, uh, certainly according to Glenn Turner watching on our ref cam, Lee Mason made error after error, apparently. Should have been a sending off, so it should have been a penalty, rather, apologies, to, to each side. Any number of yellow uh, cards missed, fouled by Naismith in the build up to his goal. So you'd have just been watching the game. Yeah, and yeah, thinking... exactly. I mean, you've you got a situation there where the referee has it, it's been overlooked, the problems, you know, the, the missed penalties yeah. because of the game itself, you know, and, and the goals that are scored. But like, like Keith says, you know, we, we've got to get these decisions right. It, it is. A, a vital part of the season, you know, and decisions do need to be made. I mean, we're talking about relegation, loss of finances and promotions, you know, so they do have to be on, on the ball. Well, let me just uh, talk about Lee Mason because yeah. I think that was a really bad appointment. You know, I said earlier on in the season, I, in fact, I think for a couple of seasons now, I've been saying Lee has not made it for me as a Premier League referee. Get him in the Football League and just let him finish his career there. Yeah. Um, you know, when you've got a big game, you have to be relaxed. You have to buy time. He did neither. No. And, he, and, he, and he was the typical uh, rabbit in the headlights uh, and following rather than leading. Very fortunate that there wasn't an incident that would have uh, taken place in the game that might have risen to a mass confrontation. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, he was in a good position to view the Milner deliberate push on the Norwich player inside the penalty area, he's got a view of it yeah. and he smiles as though like nothing's happened. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it because it was a clear penalty kick. Well, another unbelievable thing, this elbow from Conor Wickham. Well, the referees can miss those. Now, this was, this was uh, Wickham on Vertonian. This was the Spurs win at uh, Crystal Palace 3 1. And Martin Atkinson, a rare sort of omission. You've seen that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, a, it's a red card. Oh, all day long. I mean, there's yeah. no excuse for it, you know, and, and to miss it again. <laughs> 
It's, it's a critical mistake, isn't it? You know, it's, it could alter the game. What's he doing there? Why, why is he getting involved in that, Wickham? I mean, he's a striker. You were a striker, but I don't recall you. Frustration. Elbowing. Frustration. I, I mean, he's, he's been out of the game for a, a few weeks and, you know, he's getting in there. The team's struggling. You it's know. a cynical act, though, isn't it? Really but, cynical. I don't know. Do we, does he think this is how I show how brave I am? Uh, for me, it's not. It's cowardly. Yeah. You know, I, to be throwing I, arms about. Yeah. I, I think that part of that, Alan, was the fact that the, the referee ignored the holding. The player was being held. Yeah, yeah. And the frustration, he's trying to get away from his opponent to, to make a challenge for the ball. And he's decided nobody's doing anything. I'll take and it. as referees have done this year, ignored the grappling thing. We're going to come this on. is what happens, Alan. It's a great that point. Is, that is the problem. Because there were so many examples of oh. it over the weekend. I mean, Manchester United, Neil Southampton won. Mike Jones was in charge of this. There was uh, serial grappling by Chris Smalling. Virtually every corner that Manchester United faced. We, we come back to it week in, week out, don't we? And, and until we stamp it out, you're going to get in, incidents like the Conor Wickham. You know, we'll, we'll take the law into their own hands, if you like, because the referee is not doing his job. Yeah. I think that when Smalling is holding a player, it's a one-to-one -one situation. Should be penalised, of course. But it reduces Smalling's ability, if another player gets involved, to do his job. So I can't understand why players are being encouraged to grapple because it's preventing them being able to switch their yeah. focus onto another player who's getting involved with the ball. It's a great point, that. And also in that, there was less severe, but there was a Fellaini elbow uh, that was uh, missed oh, in there. He's a serial offender, big yeah. time. And, and somebody needs to sit down. I've said it before. I've sat down with this player when he was at Everton and explained certain things he can't do. He's back into the mould again. And the manager's just got to get hold of him. He's a big guy, he's, he's instantly recognisable for the referee, and he's an easy, he's an easy card. I, I, think, I think all managers would sit down, like you say, Keith, they'd sit down and, and speak to him about that. But when he goes out on that pitch, that's his, that's his way of dealing with things. You know, and the manager knows that he's going to get sent off, he's going to cost us points. So it's a, it's a catch-22 scenario, but it, as you say, he's a serial offender. Uh, it has to be stamped out by the authorities, which is the referees. Smalling gets into an international environment, I can assure you he's going to get punished yeah. and England are going to get punished. That's a great point. Well done Mike Dean by the way, it's not all bad news but he was the only, I think, the only blemish free referee. He's having a weekend. terrific season. Mike Dean is Mr Consistency. Right and in the second part of the ref show we'll talk about Anthony Taylor, the negatives of Anthony Taylor, just one major howler last week but boy he deserves some credit for a, a comeback. Absolutely. That's in part two and Mark Clattenburg will prove, has proved, he's only human. Another good performance but Chelsea Arsenal there was just one thing to pick up all in part two but serious challenges going unpunished. We're going back to Saturday now. Uh, beside those in, in Norwich uh, and Liverpool, Sunderland won, Bournemouth won, Roger East, Billy Jones of Sunderland on junior Stanislas. It should have been a red card according yeah, to oh, you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Bobby Madley, West Brom, Aston Villa, nil-nil, Villas Michael Richards. Yeah, absolutely. That was a red as well. Absolutely. Thought? I mean, I, I, I can't understand. I mean, Mark Halsey on this panel on occasions has said, look, he worries about the quality of decision making. These are not difficult decisions. And if, play, if referees are missing them or choosing not to see them, what you're going to get is an escalation of yeah. them. And then we're going to see quality players put out the game and their careers put at risk. That's the referee's task, to stop that and nip it in the bud before it, it gets point. into a, a, a real point. problem. Right. You know, well, sorry, it's, yeah. it's the referee, isn't it? You know, all the challenge... While other players are going to get away with things, they're going to keep doing it. And like you say, it's going to get stronger, tattled, they get a little bit higher, getting away with it, there's a problem. The grappling, the tattles, it's all down to the referee. If he stamps on that decision, all the players in the, in the country, in the world, know that they can't get away with it, so then they won't do it. So it's a duty to the game that the referee yeah. has. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Neglected in that case. Villa should have had a first half penalty uh, when Jordan Ayew was fouled by common consent. And finally, West Ham 2, Manchester City 2. A uh, good game again. This was Craig Pawson, Di Michaelis on Antonio, denying West Ham a scoring opportunity, which should be a red card. He only got a yellow there. Uh, I was surprised. I think uh, looking at the two, because we have obviously had Mark Clattenburg with, with the Arsenal uh, player dismissal yeah. with, through denial. What Mark did was he saw the offence, 
he's walking towards it, he's rethinking, he's replaying it through, he's probably getting some input from his colleagues, mm -hmm. goes correctly for the red card. In the case of Craig, right, he's gone straight for the yellow, he's given himself no thinking time. Yeah. When he reviews that incident, he will see that it was a clear red. The defender would not have got him. Okay, you might say, well, I'm passing an opinion. For young referees listening to this programme, the process is this. You've got a lot of criteria to deal with. Movement of the player and the ball towards goal, the proximity to play, the goal, because that could be in question. Uh, is it a foul, is it not a foul? The probability of the forward to control the ball. And in learning terms, what the referee has to do is he says to himself, when the foul is committed, take that player who's committed the foul away. Would that attacker have had a shot on goal? Mm -hmm. Yes, he would. Simple formula and a very good one for all referees to learn from. We'll be back with these guys for part two, including a referee who really showed his mettle in the last few days. Join us for that.